right before I graduated film school, I purchased the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 6K in the hopes that it would help me further my filmmaking passions and pursuits. Shortly thereafter, I came across an article by podcaster and filmmaker Noam Kroll touting the amazing benefits of the Fujifilm X-T4 for filmmaking. Thinking I needed a decent B camera, I picked one up. and For a while there, I was stuck between those two worlds. Until seven artisans came out with their own line of Vision Cinema lenses for the Fuji X-Mount system. My name is Jared, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, and if you find this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. Quick disclosure. The only reason I have these lenses is because I emailed seven artisans asking if the rumors were true, and they were making them after seeing said rumor online. They emailed back and we started a correspondence. They learned that I had a YouTube channel and that I made short films and other things like that and they were interested in working together. I got a very steep discount on the lenses in exchange to make a video. This video. That being said, Seven Artisans does not see this video before I post it and they have not approved anything in this video at all. They've just given me the basic spec information that I will be providing to you right now. I do not have these memorized, so I'll be reading them off of my phone. And we'll start with the 25 millimeter. These lenses come in 25, 35, and 50 millimeter, though I am told there are plans to bring other focal lengths in the future. I just don't know any specifics about those as of right now. So starting with the 25 millimeter, across the board, the lenses come in micro four thirds, R, FX, E, and L mounts. These are APS-C lenses. The number of aperture blades for the 25 millimeter is 13. The filter size is 82 millimeter. The focal length is obviously 25 millimeter with an aperture of T1.05. Now, from what I'm told, these are Essentially the same glass as the Firefly series from Seven Artisans, though they are rehoused in these cinema bodies and they do correct things like lens breathing. They do a great job with breathing as far as I'm concerned, but I'm no expert, but that T1.05, it's amazing. And we'll see some samples here in a bit. 11 elements in nine groups. Angle of view is 58.6 degrees. Again, still talking about the 25 millimeter. The minimum focusing distance is 0 0.25 meters with a D-clicked aperture. Uh, there's, there's no image stabilization, obviously, or autofocus. These are cinema lenses. The weight of the 25 millimeter is 956 grams, and the size is 100 millimeters, I imagine, in length. So moving on to the 35. The number of aperture blades on the 35 millimeter, 12. Uh, still 82 millimeter front filter size with an aperture of T1.05 all across the board. This has 11 elements in eight groups. The angle of view is 44 degrees. The minimum focusing distance is 0 0.37 meters. Uh, Declicked aperture, no image stabilization, et cetera, et cetera. Weight of 753 grams with an overall size of 84 millimeters. And then the 50 mil, there are 13 aperture blades, seven elements in five groups. The angle of view is 31.8 degrees with a minimum focusing distance of 0 0.5 meters coming in at 679 grams with an 85 millimeter length. All the lenses have about a 240 degree focus throw and the build quality overall is solid. It's your typical 0 0.8 pitch on the focus gearing. Everything is buttery smooth with hard stops. If you listen, it's really, really, really clean. I mean, the build quality overall, they're hefty, they're great. They have these great, fantastic front caps that just slide on and off. The whole setup is really, really good. I did mention that there's no image stabilization and I know that a lot of modern filmmakers want to get hung up on the lack or support of optical image stabilization, but with a lens this heavy, 
I do plenty of handheld, and trust me, you don't need optical image stabilization with a cinema lens, guys. Okay, I don't think anybody would call this a scientific test for sharpness, but here it is. So the camera settings right now, I have my Aperture 200X bouncing off the ceiling. This is the, the script for Fight Club. Uh, my camera settings, I'm about of a third of a stop overexposed at ISO 640. And the lens is on T1.05. This is the 50 mm and this is T11 on the 50 millimeter. This is the 35 millimeter at T1.05, T8, and T11. And this is the 25 millimeter at T1.05, T1.4 T2.8 T4 T5.6 T8 and T11. Forgive me if I'm not tack sharp and focus here. I'm actually filming on the 35 millimeter in order for you to get an idea of this in a practical application that's not completely controlled. And I know that it's not the most scientific test, but that's not my point. My point is to show you the practical application of it. Like what does the sharpness look like in the center versus the edges? I think the lenses, especially at T1.05, they're there. They're where you need them to be. The center, it looks great. And the, even though the edges are a bit soft, I think that's to be expected with such a low T-stop. And before we move on, I just wanna to touch on chromatic aberration for one second. I'm not going to do a test for it. I think people get way too hung up on chromatic aberration. I could cite as an example, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the Disney streaming series for the Marvel superheroes. There's so much chromatic aberration in that series that it's ridiculous. And I don't think that's a thing that you should get hung up on when deciding whether or not to purchase a set of cinema lenses like these. That being said, I haven't noticed anything that's so distracting that I won't use them. But again, I'm not really pixel peeping when I'm trying to make a film with cinema lenses. In my testing and experience, all three of these lenses, the 25, the 35, and the 50 millimeter, all match perfectly with contrast and color rendition. All three lenses line up perfectly with their focus gears as well 
as their aperture gears. The set has a matching outer diameter when it comes to matte boxes, that's a great feature, and they all take the exact same filter size of 82 millimeter, which makes swapping filters on and off a breeze. All three have similar weights, which would make gimbal use a little bit easier, although I can imagine that the lengths of the lenses themselves, the physical lengths, may play a factor in terms of gimbal balance, but I'll let you know in an upcoming video. When it comes to cinema lenses and what you're looking for, you're talking about color rendition, contrast, ease of use, durability, making sure they match perfectly, and that you can use them and swap them on and off the camera quickly. Just jumping in here real quick. This is the 50 millimeter, and it's very clearly the softest wide open at T1.05. I have wanted a set of cinema lenses for as long as I can remember. And actually, for a long time, I was using a modified set of vintage Soviet lenses um, with lens gears on them from followfocusgears.com. Sean over there is absolutely amazing. But stepping up to real cinema lenses with the heft and the weight and the pitch and everything matches and it's great and the, they're designed to work together is a whole new experience. In fact, I'm in the middle of shooting a short film with them right now. And I have to tell you, in editing, it looks amazing. I'll show you some test clips right here. After showing you the sample footage, my hope is that you'll stick around and check out the short film when it comes out. I'm really excited about it. I think it's probably my best one yet. Uh, so just stick around for that. The whole thing was shot on these amazing cinema lenses. So who are they for? Who is the consumer that buys the Seven Artisans Vision cinema lenses? Well, with a competitive price point at around $550 per lens, I think anybody who's still shooting APS-C should probably take a look. These lenses on crop sensor cameras cover a focal length of about 50 to 85 millimeter, uh, which is typically like your film standard as far as cinema goes. That being said, I understand that cinema lenses aren't for everyone. If you're a documentary filmmaker, as an example, you might be better off with something like an all-around zoom lens. If you're a Fuji shooter, like the 16 to 55 f 2.8, um, Sony's APS-C line even has the Tamron 17 to 70 f 2.8, which I've owned, and that's an amazing lens. But if you're somebody that wants to sit down and create something with intention and depth and meaning and be more story driven, and you don't have to be on, like you have time to sit and set up a shot in your lighting and do the whole thing, this may be an excellent option as your first set of cinema lenses. I can't talk about the competition for these lenses because I've never used those lenses. I can only tell you the price point and I think they're priced aggressively, especially for their low light and depth of field performance at T1.05, which I think is the real selling point of these lenses. All in all, I'm really happy with my purchase and I'm really happy that they have convinced me to stick with the Fujifilm X-T4 as my overall filmmaking kit. And if that's something that you guys are interested in seeing, that rig and that setup, leave a comment below and maybe I'll post a video talking about my Fujifilm X-T4 setup. But until then, my name is Jared. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.